Hi, this is Igor from HDHat.com with another Resolve version 15 tutorial that focuses on Fusion and tries to shine some light on these exciting new features and tools that we have to colorists who haven't really been exposed to this sort of stuff. Here's a little speedometer thing. Let's go to Fusion and we'll discuss a modifier called Probe, which is pretty interesting. In the viewer on the right, we're looking at the output of our comp. The viewer on the left is looking at this internally generated background. These little white dots indicate which viewer is getting what. This is number two, this is number one. If I start changing the color of this background, the dial is going up and down. You may think I'm using expressions to connect the output of this red slider to the rotation of this handle and if I select the handle, press 2 to send it to the viewer on the right, yes, there's a handle. There are the notches. There's the rotation along this axis. But how is that connected to this background? Well, let's go to the media pool and bring in another clip. It's called Car. And I will select the transform and look at our angle parameter. It's animated, but indicated by this colored dot. If you go to the modifiers, there's something called probe. An image to probe is background one, which is which was a colored background. Well, I can drag and drop this media two input, which is the car, and let's also drag and drop it to our viewer on the left so we can see what that picture is and press play. And the needle is moving pretty erratically but it appears that it's synchronous to the picture content. So what the probe modifier does is it actually measures the values of the underlining pixels and modifies the parameter based on those values. Let's build something from scratch and you'll get a better sense of what's going on. I will add another paint node connected to this media in one which is the black background. Drag and drop that into our viewer on the right and uh, just do any kind of a stroke. With that paint node selected, I'll press control space, type in XF for the transform. Then I will select the transform, press two on the keyboard. And let's modify, for example, let's modify the size parameter. I will right click on the size, go to modify with probe. Now, if I go to the modifiers, double click probe, the image to probe is empty because the probe doesn't really know yet what I want to probe, but let's drag and drop this background. And I'll switch back to the tool side of this tool. And our size is zero, so the image is squeezed to infinity. But if I select this background, start changing the color, it's growing because now this value of one is also reflected in the size of our transform node. If we go back to modifiers and select this value tab, we can do a couple of things to modify our input and output values. Uh, these parameters are simpler than they look. Basically what they say is any input value of zero is mapped to output value of zero. Any input value of one is, out, is mapped to the output value of one. So if we want to modify this so the object never goes down to infinity, we can say that any black, any input value of zero is let's say 0 0.3 if we look at the background side by side with our transform if I go all the way to the black this portion is now at 0 0.3 aside from these there are a couple of other adjustments on this tab for example, we can select which channel we're probing and we also get a little more granularity with probe rectangle and I will illustrate that in our next example. I will click on the edit page to go back up to the edit page. Go to the media pool and um, bring in this clip that says hibiscus scope. It has a 239 mat. So let's see if we can use the probe to automate center punch extraction from the scope aspect ratio. I will take the clip to Fusion by clicking on the Fusion button 
and I will add a transform node. This time I will just press this shortcut. We need a value of 1.345 to fill in the screen, but what I'd like to do is to have Fusion make the determination whether or not a clip needs to be blown up. I will click back on the transform, right click on the size, modify with probe, go to the modifiers, double click probe, image to probe, it will be media in one. Now it's gotten really small, we're, we're, we're started doing something but we're not quite set up yet. I will select the probe rectangle, reduce the height and move it down here to the mat area. By the way, as I move this across, you see weird stuff that's going on with the pictures blowing up and down based on the pixel values that are being uh, averaged in the rectangle. But we want our probing sample area to be down in the mat. Remember that 1.345 scaling factor? We'll put it right here. The logic here is if the probing sample is black, input value of 0 becomes 1.345 and that's evident here on the tools page. Our scaling factor is 1.345. Now there's a problem with the setup. Imagine this picture on the left were a full frame image without a black mat. That means that the probing area would be, let's say, around here. Well, what I, when I put it here, see that sort of changes our sizing factor to kind of some, some sort of an in-between value right now. So we can't really have that. But we can fix it by remapping this all the way down, not quite zero, but just a little bigger than zero. So now anything that's black will be blown up and all, and all the other values will be anchored. So that's the basic use of the probe modifier. In this particular use case, I actually wouldn't be relying on it myself to uh, do center extraction. I would probably be more comfortable doing it manually. That was it for the probe tool in Fusion. I hope you enjoyed it and have a good time until the next tutorial.